exactly why I don't even have an issue with any of this. I mean, I would never have an issue regardless, but it doesn't even annoy me, okay? I go right from like, it doesn't phase me to, no, actually, it's very good. This is, everyone is trans. Stop looking by Ben Shapiro. Let's take a look at this before we get to oh, this folks, Pride Month is coming up, and you know what that means? It means that you are going to get rainbow vomit on everything across. Look at how horny he is for this, bro. Ah, uh, little bro, it only got 247,000 views in four days. Damn, dude. <laughs> Pride Month's not here yet, bucko. Maybe fucking calm down. You know what I mean? Motherfucker is prepping for Pride Month more than like every gay person is, okay? He's prepping for Pride Month harder than Austin. It's ridiculous, okay? I don't know why companies always try to please around the 1% of the population. Across corporate America. If everywhere you shop is doing Pride Month, then how exactly are you going to not shop somewhere during Pride Month? You're just going to have to ingest the rainbow cereal along with the rest of it. Okay, so, so unity and corporate wokeness is principle number one. And principle number two is you won't get that offended. Because the reality is, been Harvard Business School studies about this, the left is significantly more annoying than the right is, typically speaking, when it comes what? to their consumption. Wait, 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 I'm sorry. What the fuck? What does that mean? ...of products, or this has been true at least here to four. There's a study from Harvard Business School that I've talked about on the show before. This study found that if you take a neutral corporation, a corporation that has no politics, and you have a right-wing corporation, a left-wing corporation. That the left-wing corporation... He said, scientifically speaking, the left is more annoying than the right. <laughs> what <laughs> the fuck? Is viewed somewhat positively by the left. The neutral corporation is also viewed somewhat positively by the left because they assume that it's just a left-wing corporation. A right-wing corporation loses 20 to 30 points in approval rating just for not being a left-wing corporation. For the right, however, the right doesn't have significant feelings about this one way or another. The right typically will just shop wherever it wants to shop. So corporate America has relied on this. What is he saying? Like, what, 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 is, what is happening here? What is a right-wing corporation? First of all, all corporations are right-wing. They're corporations, okay? Right-wing from an economic sense, okay? Unless they're like a cooperative owned by exclusively septum-piercing wearing bisexuals, they are probably going to be right-wing, okay? Like... I don't know what you mean by this. Like Coca-Cola, because they fucking slap on the LGBT pride flag on their on their uh, boxes for the duration of Pride Month. Does that make them a left-wing corporation? Do we just all of a sudden forget like the assassination of Colombian labor leaders at the behest of Coca-Cola Corporation? Like, are they now all of a sudden fucking, uh, you know, left-wing? Is that how that works? Poof, uh, boom. It's like you're <clears throat> basically giving it to these corporations, because that's their purpose. Their goal is to quite literally, their goal is to quite literally make you forget about all the other shit that they do, how much funds they dump into like right-wing super PACs and shit like that. Colombia was United Fruit, not Coca-Cola. My bad. So... The idea that the right are not, like, regularly um, doing mass fucking boycotts. No, it was also Coke chatter. I'm pretty sure it was Coca-Cola, but... Yeah. Here it is. In 1989, unionist Jose Avelino Chicano was killed in Coca-Cola's Pasto plant. This year, again, during negotiations, a union leader at the Bucaramanga plant, Oscar Dario Sotopolo, was murdered. When the union denounced the killings, the plant's chief of security charged its leaders with terrorism and rebellion. This is an article called The Coca-Cola Killings by the American Prospect which is led by the friend, uh, our friend of the show, David Dayen, the editor-in-chief. Yeah, I mean, classic. This is all left-wing stuff, you know what I mean? Famously, famously left-wing uh, to execute union leadership. Uh, so, my point is, I think polling shows that liberals care more about if the corporations are buying from ethical, whereas the average Republican doesn't give a fuck either way, but it's probably changing as culture war stuff gets bigger. Yeah, if you look at uh, if you look at the donation history of Coca Cola or or anyone, okay, for that matter, 
they're doing uh, kind of a 50-50 split. They always do this shit. But they also, most importantly, go to, like, the American Beverage Association, which is then funding right-wing uh, campaigns because they care about deregulation. Okay? That's the goal. I mean, they're, they're greasing the National Republican Congressional Committee with, like, pennies, basically. Okay? Organization gave 15 grand. But most of what they're focusing on is, like, shit like the American Beverage Association, GOPAC. Uh, those are the guys who are fighting for deregulation. That's like the ALEC of uh, beverage, okay? That specifically focuses on deregulation and like allowing monopolies to exist, things of that nature. That's the entire purpose of this, okay? These are industry lobbying firms that are uh, heavily right-wing from an economic sense, okay? That's their goal. Their goal is never to be like, the American Beverage Association is not going to come out and be like, The American Beverage Association is not going to come out and be like, we're actually advocating for unionization. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's very stupid. Uh, they advocate for deregulation. They advocate to, to put like actual fucking garbage inside of your uh, beverages, things that are harmful for you, and for the government to turn the other uh, cheek and uh, look the other way as they poison us. And, uh, you know, much like Donald Trump, as a big DC fan, I will keep drinking that garbage, right? Like, I'm not going to stop. I don't give a fuck. I personally love it. So the idea that like uh, Coca-Cola or any of these fucking other corporations are actually, you know, inherently left-wing is so stupid, okay? Corporate America has relied on your apathy and my apathy. And the fact that we're like, listen, man, I still got to go to Target. That's what they have relied on. But here's the thing. Alternatives are now available. The entire goal. Yeah, for the record... For the record, um, we I think this is the study we looked at. I think this might have been the study we looked at. But um, what he's fucking talking about is so stupid because, I mean, it's transparently so that he can grease up the Jeremy Boring shit. Okay? Like, that's it. Like, he, he, they are the ones who are trying to provide commodities as an alternative when... You know, the alternative is just the same exact garbage. They're made in the same plants. There's nothing else. It's just aesthetics, okay? It's the same shit, but with a different seasoning on it. And they are desperately trying to create a process where, like, there is a conservative alternative, and they want to be the monopoly of the conservative alternative. I don't think people give a shit. I don't think conservatives care. I don't think real conservatives, like the average American who will vote for a Republican reliably, it's not going to be like, oh man, I can't believe this like Bud Light actually made, Bud Light had a trans person on like one random can. Um, so that means I can't drink it anymore. Like, no, they're gonna, they're fucking alcoholics. Like they don't give a shit. Okay. It's all just marketing. And uh, I, I don't think it actually works. Okay. I don't think it actually works uh, in the way that they think it works. And they put a nice little fucking tidy markup on the top of it because it's like, this is basically the pink tax but for Republicans, okay? It's the stupid tax. He, he just said conservatives don't care, so why are they making products if they don't care? Exactly. Well, they're making the products because they want to make money, and they're trying to create a process. They're trying to create uh, a, a structure where people should care about this, okay? And it's fucking dumb. Okay, ultimately, it doesn't matter what your political perspective is. At the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break regardless. If you no longer want to see those ads, well, then all you need to do is subscribe, which you could do for $5 or you can do for free with a Twitch Prime. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully, that's me. You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky, you know? Conservative, Republican, liberal, leftist, commie, doesn't matter. The top of the hour ad break, which is three minutes long, comes for all. Here is the three-minute ad break now. So they are desperately trying to... Uh, Sakura Gore, thank you for the tank of the subs. They're desperately trying to create an alternative so they can fucking make money. Like, that's it. That's it. And I don't know if it'll be successful, especially because, like, it's so much more expensive than the average thing, even though, like, the regular corporate version of it. Um, and I don't know if why you would, like, literally pay for that markup just because uh, it's, it's pretty much the exact same product that you're getting from the exact... They're drop shipping it, basically. 
you're pretty much getting the exact same product with a markup just because they claim it's uh, fucking conservative. It's all marketing, and they're engaging in it. Very stupid. Very silly. But then again, so is, you know, American politics in general. Hassan, I will argue that people this propaganda does work on are more dangerous, more unhinged members of the right wing. Yeah, exactly. They are. So yeah, if they want to fucking shell out 10 extra fucking dollars for a, uh, for a six pack of beer. Okay. 10 extra dollars for a fucking six pack of beer. Because, uh, because that beer, even though it's being like made in the same exact facility as like, uh, as Budweiser and tastes exactly the same, then yeah, whatever. Steal their money. Who gives a shit? But understand that this is not like a genuinely held belief from Ben Shapiro. This is not like a real political move. This is simply another way for them to make more money. What's up, Lakari? Hope you're having a good day, brother. Um, but that's, that's the goal, okay? Th that's the real reason why they're doing this. They're not doing this for some like real political fucking purpose, okay? I just need you to understand. They're doing this because they want to make money. That's it. Of things like Pride Month. The entire goal of a wave of corporate propaganda on behalf of the pride progress flag, on behalf of propagandistic nonsense about the moral equivalence of all sexual activity and orientation, the, the, the beauty of all forms of sexual congress, the idea that boys can be girls, girls can be boys. Right? This entire moral program that is being pushed by the woke relies on one, their unity, and two, your apathy. But you don't actually have to do that. You don't actually have to do that. So what we are about to see during pride, and we're already seeing it, is again, corporate woke unity in the, in the assumption that you will remain apathetic no matter how woke and crazy they get. So for example, Target, right? Major corporation relies on your shopping. They have decided that it's time to sell products that transes the kids. This is a TikTok video that's been going viral showing that there are bathing suits in the kids section with tuck options. So your little boy, you're trying to trans, you can get him a girl's bathing suit that allows him to take his penis and testicles and tuck them up under himself. Isn't that nice? Dude, that's so gross, man. Why are you fucking talking about people's penises and testicles and shit? What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, it, how is this, like, normal political commentary, man? Like, I, I don't understand. Like, wh why? Why is this discourse, brother? This is, like, you think this is good for, you know, th this is family-friendly programming? Like, what the fuck do you mean? Why are you constantly thinking about, like, what the fuck's going on with people's genitals, man? I've lived my whole goddamn life never worrying about that ever. And it seems like these fucking weirdos can never stop thinking about children's genitals. It's so weird. It's so odd. This is a odd fixation. Get involved with trains like every other normal person, okay? What the fuck is wrong with you? Why is this your hyperfixation, Ben? What the fuck? Really great, great job here, Target. I'm sorry I chose you again. I just needed to do the bathing suit the last bit. I found the tuck bathing suits, the tuck friendly bathing suits. So if you need a women's bathing suit and you have a little extra meat down there that you got to hide, you have one option. That is the only bathing suit that I found in the entire store. And it's in the pride section. It's not in the kids section, women's section, boys section, baby section. It is in the pride. Of course, as always, here's the AP fact check. Target's Pride Collection features tuck-friendly swimsuits for adults, not kids. Target's seasonal collection of clothes for Pride Month collections has been the subject of several misleading videos in recent weeks, with social media users claiming the retailer is selling tuck-friendly bathing suits designed for kids and in kids' sizes. Many of the posts criticizing Target have also urged people to boycott the company. Made similar threats. Guess what? It was fucking wrong, and it was a lie, but these people don't care that it's a lie because that's their goal is to literally just whip up frenzy, dude. Their goal is to whip up frenzy, and now that like they have a direct, they have a direct form, they, they have a direct revenue stream as a counter, implies that they're going to do it way more frequently. Okay, in 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 the olden days, right, they would do this for the love of the game. They would constantly whip up people into a frenzy for the love of the game because it gave them clout. Now 
And, and cloud, of course, meant like more ad revenue, yada, yada, yada. But now they have a direct stream of revenue through their line of commodities that they're producing, which implies this shit's going to get way fucking worse. Okay? People are more unhinged, and they're getting worse and worse overall. And Ben is a capitalist and decided this is a great opportunity. In many ways, what they're doing is exactly what Target is doing, but in the opposite direction. If Target is virtue signaling, which they are, right? They don't give a shit about trans people like that. You know what I mean? It's great. They're being accommodating. That's fine, right? Ultimately, do they care? No, they just want people to buy their fucking bathing suits. They recognize that like conservatives don't care. Liberals don't care. Ultimately, it doesn't like change people's consumer decisions, but there is a, you know, massive market that they can open up to and sell products to, which there's no problem with, okay? They see a market and they want to capitalize on it. Of course, they're going to do that. That's what capitalism is about. That's what they're doing. They're doing it and virtue signaling. Conservatives are doing the exact same thing and vice signaling. That's it. That's it. If Target is, uh, is libbed up and is virtue signaling, then Ben Shapiro and the Daily Wire are vice signaling and trying to farm impressionable, dumb, baboon-brained idiots who are whipped up into a frenzy by the thought of trans people existing by these fucking perverts whose hyperfixation is like children's genitals who constantly think about children's genitals and are vice signaling about how fucking devastating trans people existing in society is so that they can sell you the same fucking products with a markup. The products are made in the same factories. The products are made by the same people. You're just paying for a markup. Okay? What's the difference between virtue signaling and vice signaling? Neither of which uh, is, is uh, indicative of like your genuine perspective, your genuinely held political beliefs. Virtue signaling is when you don't really give a shit, but you're like, oh man, I'm so pro, I'm so pro queer, like, you know, queer lives matter, blah, blah, blah. But you don't actually give a shit ultimately because you're a company. Corporations don't care. They just care about the bottom line. And vice signaling is the exact opposite. You might not genuinely care about trans people existing, but you still say like, fucking, I can't stop thinking about trans people. I'm so, I want to be mean to them. I want to fucking help them. I want to have them not exist. That's vice signaling. That's like 90% of conservative commentary. When you finally figure out that like conservative culture wars rely on people just being bullies to marginalize people, you start looking at things a little bit differently. Okay? That's it. It's all performative, ultimately. And while, uh, while, while uh, Democrats, liberals are like, oh, we care so much about black people, we care so much about the poor, we care so much about the working class, and they're virtually because they don't, all they care about is like putting a fucking Democratic ass in the seat in Congress and keep farming uh, donation dollars and, and uh, you know, do insider trading. Republicans, on the other hand, are doing the exact same thing. They might not care about it personally, or they might be hateful, but their entire policy positions revolve around bullying trans people, gay people, black people, like just being mean for no reason, being ruthlessly mean for no reason. Like when in the state of Utah, when you put forward a bill that bars trans girls from competing in like uh, high school and collegiate athletics, and then you realize that it's only one 12 year old trans girl that actually is in the fucking state, that's vice signaling. Why did you cut an entire piece of legislation and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on it? Legislation that is being pushed by, only pushed by special interest groups, by the way. There's no grassroots momentum behind it. There's no like base in the Republican Party that's like, we got to stop trans women from, uh, you know, peeing in, in the appropriate bathrooms. Like there's no momentum within the Republican Party whatsoever. It's just these fucking clown asses yelling about it nonstop. And then Republican state legislatures actually act out on those weird desires to like bar one or maybe two or maybe three 12-year-old trans girls or 13, 14-year-old trans girls from like competing with cis girls. And then they pass like penis inspection day bills in the state of Ohio. Like that's just vice signaling to the maximum. You're not changing anything about society. People are still fucking dead broke. People's financial circumstances have not changed. They are still angry, right? They'll perhaps get even more angry when the, the PE teacher has to like do 
you know, pussy inspection day because someone claimed that like your daughter is trans, right? All of a sudden, you're probably not going to be super stoked on that, are you? Republican fathers. Okay. That's done for vice signaling. That's the purpose. Pride section. It was the only penis inspection days in Kansas. No, brother. The first one that came out was in Ohio. Kansas did it as well recently, but the first penis inspection day bill that was passed was passed in Ohio. Only one I could find. And I did have another adult with me checking all the tags so that I didn't have to stay in the store for nine hours. It's the only one. What? Well, isn't that sad? It's the only one they could find. But Target is, in fact, stacked up with Pride Progress gear that is geared toward children. They have, they have baby gear that is geared toward gay pride and trans pride. Like, for, for small babies. For, like, kids. Like, what? what's going to happen if the binky is, like, rainbow colored, bro? You think your baby... <laughs> uh, I'm not letting my baby suck on a binky. That's gay. What are you, sucking on a penis? That's disgusting. Like, that's, that's what Ben's commentary has, like, reduced to, for the record. Like, that's how fucking insane this is. Just understand. Like, understand what Ben is talking about. He's talking about, like... He's talking about how, like, uh, just having rainbow colors on, like, baby clothes is, like, indoctrination or some shit. Kids who can't talk yet. And Target believes that you won't do anything about it. That's why they're doing it. They believe that they will gain the upside of the left being super enthusiastic about them. And there is no downside because the right will just go silent. The right won't pay any attention to it. Memorial Day is coming up. Or maybe because, like, it's fucking insane to make a big stink about this. Like, you would have to be an absolute fucking psychopath to be bent or out of shape over this, okay? And Ben is. So that's the reality. It is not just Target. It's also apparently Starbucks. And it's Starbucks internationally. So Starbucks has now put out an ad for India. Now, India, as you may know, is a pretty socially conservative country. When I say that the chief... Oh, he loves that. He's like, India's great. <laughs> They're so awesome. They hate Muslims over there. So do I. Word of the United States is now wokeness. I mean it. It is now wokeness because it's embedded in all of our corporate products. Starbucks is present nearly every place on the globe, and they feel the necessity to lecture people of India about why boys can be girls and girls can be boys and parents need to be tolerant and accepting of their boy pretending that he's a girl. So here is an what? ad wait, 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 from wait. Starbucks directed at the Indian market. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. This is really funny because, wait. Wait, brother. India, despite uh, being victim to, uh, you know, colonial violence, I would suspect has like a different understanding of gender than the United States of America does. Right off the bat, one way that you can immediately recognize that is because, like, if you've ever been on Indian TikTok, okay, before they fucking banned it, because Modi's a cowardly piece of shit, like, dudes cry all the time. Like, that's a, a fundamental part of Indian TikTok that we used to watch. That, right off the bat, is, like, immediately toxic masculinity or the way that it is, like, represented in society is very different. That doesn't mean that it doesn't exist in different ways. That doesn't mean that there's no violence against women or anything like that. I'm not saying that at all. But it is to get you to understand that, like, different cultures have very different perceptions of gender and gender roles, okay? Now, not only that, but if this fucking dumb bitch maybe opened a goddamn book for once, would recognize that, like, in India, there is already a... No matter how fucking fascist Modi's government is, India is massive, obviously, so there's obviously different, uh, different areas with, like, very different uh, attitudes, very different cultural norms, okay? But, like, in the Indian subcontinent, Hijra are eunuchs or intersex people or transgender people who live in communities that follow a kinship system known as the Guruchela system, also known as Aravani, Aruvani and Drogappa. So like the the at least three attitude from Biden exactly is spot on. This already has been a thing. Not only has it been a thing, but it's also 
a thing that has been codified in 2019, the Transgender Persons Protection Rights Act, the TPPRA, was passed with the Associated Rules published the following year. The act prohibits discrimination against transgender people when it comes to things like education and employment. It also includes the right to self-identification as a trans person. The na a national portal for transgender persons was introduced so that it could apply online for transgender ID. The idea that, like, the, the, uh, the assumption that you think that every country that is not in the West is actually technically kind of barbaric, and that's why they would have, like, these... They would be, like, inherently and immediately transphobic is really fucking stupid. You can still be awful, brutal, fascist, and still be pro-trans if it's a part of your culture. Lord Shiva, one half is Shiva, another half is his wife, Parvati. Yes, it's Lord showing us uh, even God is having a female part in him. Everyone should be respected. Yeah. So the idea that Ben, first of all, two things are really important for you to understand. One, he immediately jumped to the conclusion that India is uh, not, India is traditional and conservative and not too fond of trans people. Why did he do that? Because there's a hidden implication there. And that hidden implication is that actually progressive societies like America are pro-trans and India is not progressive. So of course they're anti-trans, okay? So there's that hidden implication right there that like technically even Ben understands that it's actually more evolved to be pro-trans. And guess what? India is more evolved than Western, a lot of other Western countries by that very same standard. Comrade Felipe says, you're a fraud. I thought trans women are women. Why do they need a trans ID? Do they check genitals to confirm? What kind of fucking comrade are you, brother? What, what is this? Like, why are you so bent? Why? You care about trans people existing thousands of fucking miles away in a country that you will never visit. What is wrong with you? How fucking mentally ill are you to like literally think like trans people exist in another country and they actually live in comfortably? Fuck no, not on my watch. I'm losing my fucking mind over here. Wow. It's so fucking stupid just pointing out you're wrong. I, wait, you're not even pointing out I'm wrong. What the fuck are you talking about? Pointing out I'm wrong? Your analysis is both shallow and outdated. We are currently reading an article about how this literally works in India. And you personally, like from 2019, okay, about a bill that passed in 2019 that basically offers legal protections currently to something that is thousands of years old, by the way, in, in, in a part of Indian culture. And you turn around and you say your analysis is wrong, shallow and outdated. How fucking stupid are you? All of India? I literally accounted that India is massive. And therefore, there are plenty of other parts of India that will have different opinions. It's like assuming that like, uh, like a, a region with predominantly sick Indians is going to have a, a similar perspective to other areas. It, that's, it's so fucking stupid. And that wasn't your main point. So it doesn't matter. No, Ben is wrong. And you're a fucking baboon. Oh my God. It's not the transphobia that bothers me, okay, in this regard. Sorry, trans people. It literally is not the transphobia that bothers me. It's how fucking stupid this person is, okay? They are so painfully fucking stupid that it literally just like, it, it, it kills me to see a human being be so fucking infested with Dunning-Kruger where they think that they're actually so intelligent as we are currently reading through an article talking about how there is very different understandings of, of gender, okay? And when you feel so fucking stupid, you immediately fight back. Instead of being like, hmm, let me learn about this new thing that I had no opinion on, you go, no, I'm going to go in attack mode. You're the actual fucking nerd. You talk too much, and you don't know what you're talking about. This is a very, this is like, you're, you're like an animal, dude. You're a fucking animal. You're reacting to shapes and colors that you see on screen. 
Be a fucking human, okay? Be a human being. We are supposed to be more sentient. We're supposed to be sentient beings that have like the capability of understanding, the capability of changing our fucking minds. What the fuck is wrong with you? You are currently shitting on a th multiple thousands of years old tradition in a country that you will never visit, okay? You do not understand it. You've, you've never been there. And you are literally just riding for transphobia in this regard. You're like, nah, man, I'm gonna go to India and fix that shit up, actually. Is that what you're gonna do? You guys are fucking nerds that just talk about shit and won't ever do shit is also kind of laughable because, like, if you literally look at the title currently, you'll see that we raised $52,000 for releasing aging people, from, aging people from prisons in New York City on a whim, okay, in a, in a matter of two fucking hours. You are not doing anything. You are not putting your money where your fucking mouth is, okay? You have no goals. You have no viewpoints. You just want to fucking hate. And you're a pathetic little baby. Go out and, I don't know, protest uh, trans people existing at Target then, if you want to do something about it. Be more productive about your worldview a little bit, okay? Go to India, fly out there, and change their mentality that's been 5,000 years, like, baked into society, this guy go, went from, man, fuck the cops, fuck the police, to, like, you guys are fucking nerds who talk about shit and don't ever do shit. I just sit here and lurk sometimes, but you're on essentially all the things you just said, LARPing every day about politics on stream. I get it for your bag, respectable, but you are a nerd too, buddy, lol. I'm going to unban this person. I want to fucking see what else uh, this worthless rat has to say. India also, yes, has the largest communist party on the planet, the largest active communist party on the planet, uh, for the record. You're on Twitch, little boy. You're on Twitch. We're all fucking nerds. This is the nerd platform, okay? The quicker you understand, nothing. Thanks for the content as said. A jester, what? Okay. Yeah, I was just pretending to be a fucking idiot is, is what you always reduce yourself to. Anyway, also, wouldn't this be different? We're using a third term, trans, because that's the closest term we have, but this is more of a third gender. Anyway, it's like Orthodox Jewish people being anti-abortion when it's quite literally allowed in your fucking religion, okay? Which Ben Shapiro is that person that I'm talking about. You know what I mean? He's like anti-abortion, but like his own religion expressly allows it, okay? It is in the constitution of your religion, okay? What the fuck? You're doing that because you are a dog for the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant conservative movement, okay? That's why you're doing it. That's it. That's the real fucking take, straight up. The Constitution of Judaism? Yeah, I'm just fucking joking when I say that. Chill out. For the domestic morality of the United States, of course. It also has ramifications for our foreign policy. You know what is one thing that people across the world are not interested in? The importation of this sort of crap. They're just not interested in it. I remember I was speaking, actually, this is an interesting conversation. I was speaking with a very high-ranking member of the Pakistani foreign policy establishment at one point. And, um, and this person and I were talking, and one of the things this person was saying is, Listen, we have some commonalities of interest with the United States. There are areas of crossover, but there's one thing we are not interested in whatsoever, and that is your social morality. We think that your social morality is garbage. We think that you are attempting to corrupt our children. We think that you are attempting to import your libertinism and gender confusion into our country. And so we don't want any part of that. So if your offer is blue jeans, but also transness, not interested. We'll make our own jeans. We'll import it from somewhere else. But that, that is not just you know, members of the Pakistani foreign policy establishment, that's from pretty much everywhere. It turns out there's a very small slice of the human population, and it's a weird slice. Um, for Pakistan, the Transgender Persons Protection of Rights Act was passed by Parliament in 2018 to secure the fundamental rights of transgender Pakistanis. It ensures their access to legal gender recognition, among other rights. Once again, the federal Sharia court on Friday struck it down on, uh, on several provisions of the landmark law, terming them un-Islamic. But once again, 
it's different. It's different. It's different. Now, the newest, the, this is new, by the way. This is a relatively new thing that happened in Pakistan. And they're appealing it. They're fucking appealing it. What is so stupid about what Ben is arguing here, he's arguing for stupidity, okay? He's arguing to, to dull the masses. He's arguing for his audience to be so fucking dumb. Like, it takes three seconds of Google to immediately destroy 90% of the fucking anti-trans shit that he's saying right here about how uh, third genders or some concept that, like, is not the traditional Western and relatively new rigid gender binary that uh, these these dumbasses in the conservative movement advocate for is not a thing in other places. But they are so far up their own fucking assholes with their understanding of the world and how Western cultural dominance is supreme that they can't even comprehend a world in which like people could be conservative and still have trans people, okay? People could be conservative and still have a different understanding of gender. Okay, yeah, Iran is another example of this. They have, like, <laughs> pro-trans laws. Well, Iran is a little bit uh, homophobic, but anyway. People don't understand that the West exports bigotry. Exactly. A lot of places, a lot of these places have anti-trans or, or uh, patriarchal uh, uh, assertions baked into their societal understanding or societal development due to Western expansionist policies, due to Western colonialism. That is where you learn that shit. Some may have their own form of colorism, like uh, China, right? Chinese uh, culture uh, also places a lot of emphasis on fairness of skin because that implies that you're, uh, you're, you're closer to the aristocracy. That means you're uh, not spending all of your days out uh, in, the, in the rice uh, farms. You know what I mean? That means that like uh, you have fair skin. India has colorism as well. Some of that has been accelerated through Western colonialism, Okay. But then when you think about places like uh, the uh, places where there are, you know, Afro-Latina uh, people, for example, that colorism is the same as like Western expansionist colorist uh, attitudes. That comes from the same kind of colonialism. Okay, it's closer to what you see in the United States of America. Heine, Soror, Lebanese Marxists instead, Soror hoped to depict the so-called primitive societies with greater nuance, showing how the so-called underdeveloped people were more mature in terms of feminism and democracy than the citizens of industrial nations. Yeah. Bangladesh is a Muslim country and the eighth largest population in the world, and they also recognize hijras or trans people as a separate gender or the third sex. What? It's not Latin A, it's Latinx. People from Latin America prefer Latinx. The polling shows it. Yeah, I don't, you're not right. And I don't give a shit. I, I was, I should not even say Latin A. I should have just said Latino. Okay, shut the fuck up. Shut up. I don't care. Also, I literally don't care. I was trolling law. I, I know, but don't do that right now because people will take you seriously. You know, anytime a chatter says some dumb shit in the chat, Anytime a chatter says some dumb shit in the chat, like there's at least 20% of the chatter community that will literally believe it. LGBT people in Pakistan face social difficulties compared to non-LGBT persons, even in large cities, okay? But Pakistani law is a mixture of both British law and Islamic law. The section of the penal code criminalizing consensual same-sex relations was inherited from the colonial rule of the British Raj. Remember, I've talked about decriminalization of homosexuality or same-sex relations in the Ottoman Empire during the Tanzimat era, okay, which came as a, as a way to show the Western world that, like, that like, it wasn't even a thing before then, you know what I mean? Same-sex relations was normal. It was never even considered to be, like, fucked up or wrong or, you know, uh, illegal, okay? And then they decriminalized it anyway. They codified the protections in the law in the 18th fucking century, The world has been around. History has, is a lot longer than our really stupid, silly, Western-focused understanding of the last 200 fucking years, okay? 300 fucking years. It blows my mind that we are so trapped 
in this recognition that like, no, the world is like literally led by the Catholic church. Like that's how, that's how the world is. And motherfuckers just turn around and say wrong when I'm not wrong. I am right. Oh, he's joking. He's a history started in 1776. This is something. This is something that a lot of trans activists try to educate people on. And it doesn't matter because people are just like, nope, la, 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 can't hear you. I'm still going to be dumb. I'm still going to think that like they're killing, they're executing all the trans people in India, brother. Okay. Most South Asian nations, there's a concept of a third gender where members are referred to by societies as neither man nor woman. Pakistan is no different. It has a vibrant culture of hijras. While the term is commonly used in South Asia, it is considered derogatory in Urdu. The term kawa, what? Kawaja Sara is used instead. They are sometimes referred to transgender, intersex, or eunuchs in the English language publications. Like transgender people in many countries, they are sometimes subjects of ridicule, abuse, and violence. That said, they enjoy a certain level of acceptance due to their position in pre-colonial society. For example, they are welcome at weddings where they will dance as entertainment for the men and are also welcome among the women. In Punjabi, they are referred to as Kushra and in Sindhi as Khadra. Their presence in society is usually tolerated and are considered blessed in the Pakistani culture. Tolerated. This is what happens. You come across like an absolute fucking idiot if you just think that every other culture is barbaric only the Western culture is dominant. Only the Western culture is superior. And your understanding of traditional values or even fascism, like the, you know, the, the form expressed in fucking India, okay, is, uh, is, is actually similar to like Ben Shapiro's understanding of the world. You come across like a fucking dumbass. You're like, huh, Starbucks is doing like trans acceptance in India. Lol, they're traditional. They must hate trans people just like we do because that's what traditional culture means in the Western world. Guess what? You're fucking wrong. You're so wrong. But it doesn't matter. And that's what's really frustrating about it. It doesn't matter that you're wrong and you're oblivious and no one will correct you on it. Okay? It doesn't matter. <sighs> this is the Women's Martha in Karachi, Pakistan on International Women's Day in 2018. The women in the picture are Pakistani trans women, a.k.a. Khwaja Siras or Hijras. One is a friend, a close friend of mine. In the eyes of the Pakistani government and anthropologists, they're a third gender. They're denied access to many resources that are available to cis women. Trans women in Pakistan didn't decide on to be third gender. Cis people force it on them, whether they like it or not. Western anthropologists are keen on seeing non-Western trans women as culturally constructed third genders, neither male nor female, and often contrast them. A legitimate third gender is accepted in his culture with Western trans women. Horrific parodies of female stereotypes. What? I don't even know what this person is saying. Are they saying that Western trans women are horrific parodies of female stereotypes? The fuck? But is there changing between male and female genders or can you become a third non-binary like gender? Oh, in the Western media, they are depicting them as that. There are lots of smoke and mirrors and jargon used to obscure the fact that while each culture's trans women are treated as a single culturally constructed identity separate from all trans women, cis women are treated as a universal category that can be just called women. Even though Pakistani Aurat and German Frauen and Guatemalan Mujer, uh, will, Mujer, is how you say it, will generally lead extraordinary different lives due to differences in culture, they are universally recognized as women. The trans misogynists will say, yes, but we can't ignore the way gender is culturally constructed and hijras aren't trans women, they're a third gender. Now let's worry less about trans people and more about the rights of women in Burkina Faso. In other words, the trans misogynists, all cis women are women and all trans women are something else. But Kat, you're not Indian or Pakistani. You're not hijra or Kwahasira. Why is this so important to you? Have you ever heard the Neapolitan, uh, Neapolitan third gender, femininiello? It's the term moniker, the femme in yellow, is derived from, yes, I am Neapolitan, shut up. I'm going to tell you a little bit about, okay, this is like, it devolves into something else. So, why am I mentioning this? Is it because I just want to get a fucking dunk off on Ben Shabibo? Okay, no. It's not just that, although that does feel good because he's a fucking idiot and so is his audience. Why am I bringing this up? Because the concept of gender is culturally defined. And the proof is in the fucking pudding. 
there are obviously biological considerations for gender that have existed, like intersex people, okay? And they have existed since like ancient fucking Mesopotamia or other ancient cultures, tribal cultures, for example, indigenous cultures with the third gender or two spirits, sorry. But gender, which is an expression, an identity that is clearly socially constructed, is absolutely proven by the reality that you are seeing in front of you. Here is a Pakistani chatter. My orthodox, very religious parents still accept and embrace the third gender. My father literally watches stage plays where trans people are the stars. They are invited to talk and game shows. They're respected as far as I know. Don't export your white shit is what, uh, what, what uh, a Pakistani Hassan Abihead just said. Um, yeah. Big stretch. It's so easy to understand if you read literally any book about it. Yeah, except the, the fucking freaks, the conservative freaks who already hate learning and reading and want to literally ban these books anyway, okay? They also will look to cultures and countries like this and say, well, they're barbaric anyway. Like there is this Western chauvinist colonialist mentality that is so deeply ingrained in the minds of every American, whether they recognize it or not, when they talk about indigenous people, okay? Like whenever someone goes around and says like, well, there's a third, you know, there's a two-spirit uh, concept in an indigenous society and it's been around for thousands of fucking years and they go like, oh, who cares? They're fucking cannibal barbarians that we eviscerated. And it's like, it's so disgusting. The disdain you have for anthropology, the, the, the attitude you have towards other cultures, like that is, and I'll draw an analogy here to like the Jordan Neely murder on the subway train. That is true barbarism, okay? You are not an evolved citizen of the world if you treat other cultures with so much disdain by putting them down because they're different than yours, Okay? You are the real barbarian, not the indigenous uh, societies that we are looking at. You have better knowledge. You are better equipped with the scientific understanding. You are better equipped with a, with a better understanding of the world. You are, you've been taught to be tolerant. You've, been, you've evolved into this like higher being, okay, than people that lived uh, before, in the before times, and yet you still choose to be a fucking animal. You are more barbaric. Just like in the case of Jordan Neely, the person who went up from behind him and executed him was the real threat. That's the violent act. Not the homeless person who was begging for fucking food and saying, I'm done, I'm done with this. Okay? You're the animal. But we don't understand it that way. We don't see it that way. We just can't. We can't escape the way that we are so trapped in our understanding of gender, in our understanding of how society should run. We are so, we embrace the, the depersonalization, the, the, human, the dehumanization that uh, uh, black people face, that trans people face, that it's like, it's, it's second nature. We don't even, we can't even imagine a world outside of that. So this is the way that Ben Shapiro reacts without even doing a little bit of fucking research and coming across so entirely wrong about other cultures because he's a Western, white, ethnocentric, chauvinist, imperialist pervert, okay? That's why. It's disgusting. You are not superior by any means. A superior culture, if such a thing existed... Okay, an evolved person would do a little bit of reading and practice an empathetic worldview. You do not have that because you're a barbarian. You can put a fucking suit on or maybe sometimes look more business casual, okay, and try to present yourself as this like intellectual giant of the conservative movement. But all you're doing when you're advocating for a reactionary worldview is trying to get others on board with how much of a fucking barbarian animal you are, okay?
Oof. Nasty. Place of the human population that is very into this stuff and now wishes to proselytize on its behalf. But if you wish to, under, it, it makes it harder for us to form alliances with countries based on commonality of interest. Because what they say is, if we let you in the, the front door, we're very concerned with what you are going to bring in with you. Again, the export in 1950s America, 1940s America, 1930s America, the export was, we're going to bring American military power, we're going to establish your freedom, and we are not going to threaten your baseline level of morality. Because you know what we still believe in? We still believe in like monogamous nuclear families. Like the, the things that are the most threatening are like rock and roll. That was like the big threat in the 1950s and 60s. We might bring rock and roll to your shores and that was going to corrupt the youth. Now, the big threat is we might come in and tell your son that he should cut off his penis. Dog, again, everything that he established from that point on is so stupid because we already, we already dunked on it. You know what I mean? If anything... Western capitalist understanding of trans people is literally worse if, if there is such a thing. Like the, the Western liberal understanding of trans people is like catching up to India and Pakistan, okay? Shut the fuck up. Shut up. Shut up. Companies are not trying to indoctrinate other cultures. It doesn't work that way. If a company is doing pro-trans marketing, that means there's a lot of fucking trans people and people are not upset at that, okay? So why the fuck are you getting mad at that from Nashville, motherfucking Tennessee? They already made their minds. Starbucks decided. They recognized the market in Pakistan. They recognized the market in India. That's why they're doing the pro-trans cups in India, okay? They recognize the consumer base has, uh, uh, it doesn't have the same feelings that you do. Well, that, that's, that's a pretty big threat, as it turns out. So it actually has ramifications for how we do foreign policy because who wants to ally with a country that says the condition of us allying with you, Saudi Arabia, the condition of us making an alliance with you, Hungary, the, the, the condition of us forming a more solid relationship with you, India, is that you fly the pride progress flag and also pretend that your son is a daughter. Here's the Starbucks India, India commercial. It says calling Arpit. It's a, an older gentleman calling his son on his phone. And the mom is looking at him skeptically. And she says, listen, don't get angry this time, please. They're in a Starbucks. And he's, he's starting Thank to get you, upset. Bro, I'm such a fucking chatter. Immediately, I want to be like, we can read, Ben. Which is what you guys tell me all the time when I read the subtitles. To be accommodating for those who are just like simply listening on audio only immediately that, and here comes the oh look our pit's a girl but our pit isn't a girl our i know but thanks for meeting weekend. me dad i know it's been years bro this is fu this is awesome dude dude okay ben shapiro is so transphobic it's not enough that like you know pro trans shit's happening in america he had to literally go to india a culture that he doesn't fucking understand that he completely misrepresented and is getting mad at a fucking indian pro trans ad dude at a at, at a certain point you gotta someone needs to shake some sense into you dog someone's gotta be like dude what are you doing what are you doing? Like, why are you crying about some fucking ad in India? What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? It doesn't make any fucking sense, dude. It doesn't make any sense. You should debate him. I would love to debate Ben Shapiro for the record. I know that there's a lot of people who are like, Hassan is ducking Ben. No, motherfucker. Jubilee literally said they would set up a, uh, set up a debate between me and Ben Shapiro. I said I would do it. I would love to do it, okay? I have no issue debating Ben Shapiro, okay? I have no issue debating Steven Crowder. I would love to do this, okay? I would love to do this. But you still mean the world to me. Oh, dad's gonna give coffee. a warm hug to his coffee? Oh, they're going to get coffee together. And then mom is so accepting. Now dad's accepting all because of Starbucks' coffee. 
first of all, dude, okay. That, okay, listen, listen. No, no, put some respect on that. Uh, globally, not every country has great coffee, okay? I can't speak for India. I've never been there. But no, 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 no. Wherever you fucking go, man, no matter where you go on the planet, I can't believe I'm riding for Starbucks like that. But no, no fucking shot, dude. Starbucks actually has some solid fucking coffee globally. Everywhere I've been to, everywhere I've fucking been to, if I go to a Starbucks, I know what I'm going to get. It's overpriced, certainly. It's overpriced, but nope, it's not shit. I'm sorry. It's consistent. It's good. You get exactly what you get. I'm in Seattle and you're wrong. Actual worst is on take. Dude, there's a reason why Connor, for example, in Japan, almost exclusively consumes Starbucks. You're saying it's just sugar? I don't even drink a sugary beverage at Starbucks. I drink a cold brew. Starbucks has great cold brew. Actually pretty solid. Literally anywhere you go, you go to Europe, you go to fucking Japan, you get the consistent good cold brew regardless of where you are. Okay? Japan has awful coffee, yeah. Uh, I, I know. Oh, little burn coffee makes you... Your habits haven't changed. Oh, to be fair, I've never had... Uh, by the way, I've never had a regular Starbucks coffee. I've only had cold brew, so I can't speak on anything else. I will admit that. I'll be the first to admit that. So maybe I might be grossly wrong about their regular hot coffee. I rarely ever drink regular hot coffee unless I'm drinking Nespresso's. Says the dad. Coffees for our pita. Three cold coffees for our pita. And it's for our pita, not our pit. Our pita. And he ordered it because he's accepting her name, guys. Okay, you know this fucking video is bullshit because... No one in Starbucks, not in India or in any other fucking country is ever going to get your name right. Okay. Let's be fucking real. That's why the ad's bullshit. If I was criticizing this ad, I'd be like, okay, that part is a stretch. Okay. Not the, not the Indian conservative father being uh, more understanding of, uh, his, his trans daughter or anything like that is the fact that like the person that's working there wrote the name correctly. No shot. Yeah, it'd be like copy, coffee for Arpatifa. <laughs> no shot would it be right. No shot. Oh, so and the guitar is going to... For me, you are still my kid. Only a letter has got added to your name. He doesn't say that part where the got subtracted. Oh, gross, dude. What is wrong with you? But you don't even know that. What's wrong with you, man? That's so weird. Bro, I am I am a firm believer that transphobes are their own worst enemies in many respects because of, like, how callously they just talk about, like, trans people. Like, they're just not real human beings. And I feel like to the average person who still has, like, apathy towards trans people, when they hear someone like Ben immediately rush to, like, the person's genitals, you're like, what? Why? Like, this is not something that I ever think about. You're a fucking pervert, dude. You're a gross pervert. If your immediate perspective is like, you see a trans person, you're like, oh, the dicks. Or, Do you have a dick? Do you not have a dick? Can I suck it? I mean, fuck. Uh, what's going on? What's, I just want to know what your, what your genitals look like. It's like, you're a fucking weirdo, dude. You're a weirdo. It's gross. It's fucking gross, dude. Every fucking transphobic person just ultimately wants to see some trans penis, okay? They want to check the genitals of every trans person. They want to know what they're working with. It's fucking gross. It's disgusting. You're a fucking little freak, dude. You are a... First of all, in a normal world, you talk like this about any other circumstance, people would look at you and go, you are a gross pedophile, okay? What the fuck is wrong with you? You are a gross pedophile for constantly talking about children's genitals, okay? Calm the fuck down, tiny man. You are not fooling anyone just because you have the stature of a child doesn't mean that you are one. You are a gross 
pedophile. You need to leave the vicinity. This is a fucking Wendy's or a Starbucks, okay? It's, it's fucked up. Mm, oh, and the singing. No, like Sarah McLaughlin, Indian style over here. It starts with Arpit, Arpita. Hashtag, it starts with your name. So Starbucks is now exporting the transness to India. It's not.